What are you guys doing? That doesn't. Oh, Marty's gonna lick it. You gotta see what it is first. What is it, guys? It's a Welsh cow. Fred just wants to. What are you guys doing in my stuff? You know, monsters. They are. Marty was licking it, and Fred was trying to suckle it. <laughs> They're so weird. Cats are weird. If it you is think a Welsh about it. Cow. Hi, little Highland cow for them to play oh. with. <laughs> they kind of look like they could be its children. Like half and half <laughs> colors. You guys are weird. Okay, that's enough. Okay. The status so far is we have the radio ready to go into the cabinet. I have aligned it. Now, I promised a whole bunch of you that I will do an alignment video, probably a video series, and I will. That's I'm not uh, reneging on that. But I do need to get this radio in here. And this isn't probably the most interesting radio to show an alignment series or video uh, with. It requires a lot of hooking up underneath the chassis. And, you know, if you're doing your own, it's easy to do that to see where, you, you know, to look at it and see it. But to show it in a video to try and show me connecting an, a gator wire up to the, you know, one of the pins on a seven pin tube socket, you know, mini tube socket. That's, you're not going to see much, and it's not going to be very interesting. So I am going to do a, 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 an alignment series um, coming up real soon. It's not the next radio. It's a couple radios down, but it won't take me long to get to it. And it's a big Zenith tombstone. And the reason I like that is because you're connecting up to a grid cap on a couple of different steps in the alignment. Um, it's it, all of the um, trimmers on you know the black dial zeniths most of the trimmers if not all are always um, accessible from outside the cabinet through holes from outside the chassis through holes in the chassis what that does is that makes it possible for me to show you what i'm doing without having to you know be trying to get in there with the camera and looking under the chassis and so forth so um that's coming up let me uh go ahead and get ready to put this chassis in this cabinet and the first thing i need to do is put the feet on the corners and also, the antenna is going to hook on, hooks up to these two little terminals on this mini terminal strip. The loop antenna does. Now, if I have an external antenna, it connects up right there. But the loop antenna connects here. And uh, I still got a glob of solder on each terminal here that I'm going to get rid of. And then I'm going to probably use gator clips on this loop antenna to make it easier to hook it up to this. And uh, we'll see, because if I solder it, then every time this chassis ever has to come out of here, it's going to have to be desoldered, and that's a pain in the butt. So let me go ahead and get this solder off of here. I've been uh, doing quite a bit of desoldering today, so I found a really unusual problem with this radio. Somewhere, sometime in the past, I'll just describe it to you, because I got into it and I, I totally got lost in the job and forgot to turn on the camera. And that happens sometimes, guys. You get old, you forget things. So somebody in the past had problems with the FM with this. And, um, wow, well, Freddie's been sitting on my towel. And what they did was they did a modification. Apparently, they were having problems uh, with the um, 7A6 that uh, sits it's right here. And it is the ratio detector tube, okay? Now, some, for some reason, and I can't quite figure it out, they removed the heater wire completely from the 7A6, the hot side of the heater wire, and then used that terminal um, as, you know, that, that tube socket terminal as like a terminal strip and, and hooks. Computer freeze program. As I said, they disconnected one of the terminals, uh, one of the heater terminals from that tube. But strangely, the tube still worked, and I can't, I couldn't quite figure out why, except that maybe one of the other or more of the other components that they connected to that terminal uh, actually conducted current that, that fired up the heater, because it did still light, but I don't know if it, you know, lit to the correct heat or whatever. So the tube was working kind of, but not right. Resume program. Well, you know, as I was going through the thing, and this, let, let, my, let my stupid mistakes be a lesson to you. As I was going through this radio, I was replacing one component at a time, and this is the only real weakness in the way I like to do it. 
sometimes you lose, you, you forget yourself and you're replacing components and you know, you're generally checking on the schematic and so forth. But sometimes you forget yourself and you replace two or three and then you'll go to the schematic maybe. And so you might actually replace something that was done wrong a long time ago and all you're doing is putting new components in the wrong spot. Well, that's what I did on this because I wasn't paying attention. I went ahead and put everything back in except new the way it was. And I moved on and I didn't bother to mark it on the schema until today. And so I didn't really know I'd done something wrong. So today I'm struggling with this thing, right? I'm not getting FM reception. Actually, I was getting it, but it was real distorted. And I complained about that before, I think, in an earlier video. And I said, well, during the alignment, I'll, so I'll sort this out. Well, the alignment didn't sort it out. In fact, I couldn't align it. Well, what I found was they had crossed a couple wires on this 7A6, and I think they just turned it into a very simple detector rather than a ratio detector. I'm not sure how they were able to make FM work. But, well, once I identified that, I, uh, I put a terminal strip in there and moved those components that were, that were placed on the tube socket, you know, using the tube socket as a terminal strip. I, I moved those components to a real terminal strip. I ran a wire, connected the heater, uh, turn the turn the radio on and I'll be darned FM works really well now the distortion is gone I did some some aligning on it, but I really didn't need to do much on it once I had that squared away I had already aligned the AM so you know the IFs were good. They share an IF so that was mostly good um, everything on it was okay um, once I took care of that little <laughs> that little issue so it's, it's kind of, I, I'll share the blame with the fellow that, that wired it up the way they did. I'm sure it was a situation where the radio stopped working. They had limited resources for some reason, and they did what they could do. And I can't blame people for that. Whoever did it kind of knew what they were doing because they at least made FM sort of functional. But it wasn't, it wasn't right, you know. Well, it was easy enough for me to make it right once I caught myself in, a, you know, in my dumbness. And I looked on the schema and realized that I hadn't done what I usually do. You know, here's the deal, man. I always preach attention to detail. And then I'll forget something that makes me look dumb. But that's also an opportunity. My mistake is an opportunity to say to you, uh, pay attention to detail, man. As you replace them, if you do it like I do, and you do one component at a time... Mark them off as you go on the schematic. That way you can identify if something was done incorrectly before, you can spot it. Okay, once you spot it, once you spot it, well then you can fix it if, the, if, if it's uh, something wrong. Really simple, okay? Here I'm fighting with this stupid lamp. These lamps have to go. They're getting bad. Whoever did this soldering, whoever worked on it before was not a good solderer. There's solder just globbed. When, when I, you can always tell where their work was because the solder is globbed. Now, I'm just going to leave those like that until I get the radio uh, cabinet, the radio chassis in the cabinet. Now, if I need to solder wires to this with alligator clips on it, I'll do that. Ouch. Molten solder's hot, guys. It, it's, it's hot. So if I need to solder some alligator clips, some wires here with alligator clips, I'll do that so that I can clip them onto these wires that are the loop antenna and the radio. That loop antenna almost looks homemade, but it's real. That's the way they were. Okay. I got this thing ready to go. I'm going to put the feet on the corners of this chassis now. You might remember that I commented that these feet were in reasonable condition and that they would be really hard to find. Well, that's, that's exactly right. They are. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put them on here. I'm trying to remember how they go. Tip this up here. They were, I just remember they were kind of funky. Yeah. So, what we have I might the 
closest thing I have found to these little feet, which if you look carefully at, you can see they're pretty they're pretty cracked. I thought they were in better shape when I removed them, but looking at them more closely now, they're pretty well cracked. Um, the closest thing I can find to these are these uh, zenith, uh, these thick washers that I like to use in zenith radios. It, they're a little bit thinner, but they're also more rigid. They're not as easy to compress as these, so I think they're going to do the trick. I'm just trying to make sure that I have the room for them. Right, so these things here are small, and they press up like that. This isn't so small. Hmm. What I could do, though, I could try it on one. I can cut a pie section out of this thing and make it about roughly the same diameter as this guy. Okay, once I do that, it should fit okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to look at some other other ones real quick just to see if there's anything else that will work. Okay, these might work. These grommets are a little bit smaller, um, so they might fit in that hole better. And uh, this thing fits in here pretty good. Let me just try that. You see, let me show you how this is supposed to work. These guys here, you see that bushing? It, it kind of fits over this corner right here so that this whole washer was, sits right like that. Okay? That's all there is to it. And that bushing prevents this from cutting the washer up and the flared part here um, get, prevents it from slicing it as it pushes down. If I take this guy right here which is just a, like a, a tuner grommet or you know a chassis grommet um, this will work, I think, if I just take this and I can fit that over the corner just, just like the other one. There we go. It's a little bit thinner, so I'm not sure I like that. What I could do is put some washers on this part right here to push this down a little bit. Now, let me try that. Okay, if I take this guy here and I put it a couple of these like that, it will give me some added thickness. I'm going to want to make the same on every one though. So, I have to make sure that I have four of anything I use. These washers here are nice and thick, and I seem to have a bunch of them. Okay, so let me do that. Take these two guys, two on each one maybe, and I think that might do the trick. Let me try it on all four corners and see what happens. So we'll put two here. I hate using these, these nice grommets this way, but I know where to find them. I just go back to renovated radios and pick up some more. Um, that's why I keep so many different styles around, because you never know what you're going to use them for. Okay. Put two washers on the this corner post and uh, it takes three hands to do this and then push the grommet up on there and it doesn't really want to stay there we go hmm. I have an idea though to get it just to stay because it won't stay while I'm putting it onto the, well I'm sliding this in the chassis either. Let me try this. Okay. Go ahead and put a little tape on here. Not a lot. And then uh, make it so it's easy to get hold of when I need to. You know what? I'm not going to have space to get hold of it. So what I need to do is make this a one piece affair. 
So I'll go ahead and put this tape on that. Come all the way around this guy here. And make it so that once this chassis is in place, I can grab it and pull it off real easily from there. I mean, it's not going to stay there forever, but it'll stay there long enough to get this chassis in, I think. So now let me put these on the other corners, and then we'll be ready to fly. Get the cord out of the way. They don't like to stay, so I'll have to do one at a time. Take the grommet, pull the grommet out of the old washer, and of course there'll be a whole buttload of rubber that sticks to it, and you got to clean it off with a screwdriver. So you just get it right on there and scrape it clean. Wifey and I started watching season three of The Crown last night. That's a good show. It's pretty interesting. I wonder what the real Queen Elizabeth thinks of it. Okay, and push that bugger on there. See, that gives it just enough extra, these washers do, to keep that from uh, compressing too far and bottoming out. If it bottoms out, then the chassis is sitting against the wood, and then the, uh, the wood will vibrate from the speaker playing. And that may cause microphonics, you know, where tubes transmit sound that they pick up uh, through vibration. Um, and they'll amplify that and you can get all kinds of ugliness from that. You get just awful noise in your music. You can get feedback. And they've known about this for a long time. You think about what's inside of a tube. If you want to know kind of what I mean, grab a hold of an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb, put it up close to your ear and just tap it a little bit. You'll kind of hear the filaments in there ringing a little bit. Well, that's what happens inside of tubes too. Only when you're trying to amplify sound, you don't want that to happen. Grab another grommet. I got a, a big order from Renovated Radios last week and uh, couldn't, couldn't have come at a better time. I love Renovated Radios. They take really good care of me. I don't, I don't work for them. I'm not being paid by them. I just, you know what guys, a lot of people ask me, hey, where do you get your stuff? Well, that's one of my favorite places to get my stuff. Once I got have this in there, and I have the screws in, then I'll just pull the tape, and hopefully it'll come off when I pull it up. It'll take the tape off of there. If, if some of the tape sticks on there, well, it's not the end of the world. You'll never see it until you take the chassis out. Now, I almost did my traditional mistake there again, guys. I do this every single time. I leave the knobs on when I stick the chassis in the radio. It drives me nuts. It makes me doubt my intelligence sometimes when I make the same mistake over and over. Alright, so let me go ahead and slide this on in there. Tip it a little bit to get it past that this lip right here. And then you want to kind of lift up on it when you're bringing it in because you don't want to drag on those grommets. To the left of the speaker. Alright. Great. Now that's more or less in place. Now I need to take these screws and uh, screw into the chassis. The reason you use these, these rubbers here are to isolate because the screw will also transmit from the cabinet through the screw into the radio chassis. So Westinghouse was really paying attention on this radio. What you have to do is you have to put the screw in from down below. Okay. And then you have to kind of, if you can, look up here and see where it goes in. You can see the spot that the screw goes into. You just start it by with your fingers, and you'll be able to get it pretty far with your fingers. Let me see if I'm about doing the other side now. Boy, this thing's getting heavy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can't find the hole. Yeah, my mother always had something funny to say about that. Sorry guys, this is a family YouTube channel. I need to watch my mouth. Can't help it though, my mother taught me these things. 
what I have never told you, I don't think, is that my mother was single, and uh, she raised three kids all by herself, which was a hard thing to do in the early 1960s as a woman, an uneducated woman. And so my mom always worked at least two jobs. And one of those jobs was as a bartender in a country and western bar in the working class part, the lower working class part of town where we lived. And uh, so my mother had to be creative with both her language and her um, ability to deal with drunken fools. She was pretty good at both. She uh, was even shorter than I am, which is saying a lot, because that's pretty darn short. But yet she could take on guys that were virtually twice her weight and at least 20 or 30 percent taller than her. And uh, she, did, she was uh, amazing at that. Well, in the process, she learned some pretty colorful language. Let's see if my plan works. I may have to use some pliers. Well, it may have its limitations, and then I might not be able to get all of it off, but it really doesn't matter, does it? Not too much anyway, because no one's going to notice. Look at that, I got most of it off, all except for the very front. I can live with that. Do this side here. This side's easy, of course. Here we go. And those feet look good, actually. They look pretty darn good. And the radio is suspended. You can kind of see that it's got some ability to wiggle there. I'm going to solder some wire, some gator wires onto that. And that will make it easier for someone to remove the chassis next time. Not exactly original, but the alternative is to uh, to desolder it every time. That'll get old. Remember, I put the fuse on this radio under the chassis. So if the fuse dies, you, got, you have to pull the chassis out to fix it. We have these handy dandy little gator clips that you don't even have to bother soldering with. Basically, you just feed this. You just feed this right through the hole, and then you just screw it down. And I figure that is no less secure than the screw terminals on any antenna connection, so I'm not going to worry about it. Fred, you're making a bunch of noise back there. Fred is a chewer. Not all cats are chewers, but some are. And some are kind of like, they're as bad as dogs, right? Fred's one of those. He chews on everything. He especially, his favorite flavor is cardboard. But he chews on just about everything. I don't, I don't quite get it. I don't know what he's, what he's accomplishing by chewing. But, but he seems to enjoy it a great deal. He'll chew on plastic. Whenever I open the pantry door, he'll come running from wherever he is because he gets excited. He gets to chew on the the outer packaging for the plastic uh, for the uh, water bottles that we buy. So we go to Costco and we buy these big flats of water bottles, and they're wrapped in plastic, you know. Well, he loves to chew on that goofy plastic, and uh, so when I open the pantry door. That silly cat will run from wherever he is to get to that pantry and get in there and chew on that plastic. Um, I don't get it, but that's uh, that's what he does. He's kind of an unusual cat. He's got some weird habits. Maybe it's just that you know all cats have weird habits. It's just that for every cat, their the weird habits are different, making him even more weird. Guess I can turn the Fred cam off, eh? I have noticed that my cell phone is getting 
noticeably slower lately and I couldn't I can't figure out why that might be unless uh, the last update designs that in there to make me feel like I need to get a new phone they can kiss my butt those things are way expensive and this one otherwise is working fine so whatever their plan is it isn't gonna work now I know that sounds like a conspiracy theorist at work but the truth is I wouldn't be surprised at all if that were the kind of thing they do alright so there we go it makes it easy now to pull this chassis this AM antenna is connected to one side here right there with the with the gator wire with the gator clip okay nice and straightforward okay and then if I want to hook up the FM dipole the twin lead I can hook it up here now they had this bow tie thing under here but uh, that I just can't see that working very well so what I'm going to do is encourage them to get a, uh, a piece of twin lead and just you don't really have to hang it you just hook it up and dangle it to the floor if you want to if you put this up on a cabinet for example and then you dangle it behind the cabinet it works just fine um, I that's that's what I do I buy you know you can get them on Amazon for about 10 bucks or so at an FM antenna and they work great all right guys I'll tell you what I'm going to turn the radio around and in just a couple minutes I'm going to show you this radio we're going to turn it on and do like a first reveal but first before I do that let me hook this speaker up so guys this has been happening for the last 45 minutes or so and once again the exact same setup the only difference is I took the two lights that have gels on them and they don't ever quit Marty starts it and then Fred just whoops up on him with those back legs of his and Marty has not yet figured out how to deal with those back legs Fred uses them like a rabbit does and he'll shred you with those legs and then sometimes Fred will get up and use his body weight to take uh, poor little Marty out <laughs> See, he leaps up in the air and then comes slamming down on Marty. And that usually ticks Marty off pretty good. As you can see, he's getting kind of kind of mad now. Fred figures that Marty started it, now he's going to finish it. What I was what I started out by saying is that this has been going on for 45 minutes. This is every day. It's every day in here they got nothing else to do so they come in and bug me and if they can't bug me they'll bug each other in my presence they don't do this upstairs where there's a lot more room and uh, you know they don't do this where they're not going to get stepped on because occasionally they get in my way look at he's gonna go get him he's gonna go get him aren't you Marty he's stalking him Alright guys, it is time to uh, show off this radio. It's all done now and I'm real happy about it. It looks a whole lot better than it did when I first took it in. Um, for those of you that are just watching this video in the series, this is a 1947 Westinghouse model H161. This is uh, an 8 tube AM FM radio, real nice radio. Uh, real good sounding radio with a 6L6 for an output tube, so it's got a, it's got a nice sound. This uh, this radio um, was uh, this radio looked a whole lot different when I first took it in because it had contact paper over the entire every surface of the radio had vinyl contact covering on it, the kind of stuff that was popular in the 1970s and early 1980s. It took a lot of time with some heat to get that off of there. There is some gouges on the radio. I did not put those gouges there, but they, there were some there. And, uh, but that's okay. It really lends the radio a nice kind of rustic quality that I like a lot. Originally, this radio had a little bit darker front fascia here, but uh, this, this wood here did not want to take the stain very well, so I decided that it would be better to leave it be. And besides, the contrast between this wood color and these knobs is beautiful. And the contrast between this wood and the speaker cloth is beautiful as well. So uh, it's a nice looking radio now, but what really matters is how does it sound. 
So we're on AM right now. Let me turn it on. We'll see. You can see the AM indicator light right up there. Takes a second to warm up and there we go. Now, oops. Now that is AM 570. Now those that have been watching my vids for a while know that I'm in a basement. I'm below grade. AM 570 is, is often a tough one for radios to pick up down here. Now this just has the loop antenna connected. And uh, it's doing a real fine job of picking that up. Some Democratic senators want President Trump to step down over sexual misconduct allegations. New York's Kirsten Gillibrand is yeah. leading the charge, telling CNN... Oh, God, are they never going to give up? I'm so tired of it, man. Just give up. The guy's the president. Leave it alone. From the big old uh, you know, they're, they're just fools. Okay, here's volume. Okay, the power, the power control is on the volume knob. All right. This is the tone control. Let me demonstrate that. Utah County to Lehigh, heading past the Hunted Alpine exit into American Fork. Northbound I-15 traffic is getting through downtown through North Salt Lake. Let's tune around a bit. I'll show you real quick what it what it's like. In fact, I'll tilt it so you can see it better. Let me find a wood block. Now I think you can see what I'm doing a little better. You can post a job in You'll hear a little noise coming from the the LED lights. Like, okay, Tiger's setting up for the putt. Yep, there it is. Walter. Oh. Well, uh, but we say, how, how have we polluted you? A little result of response by... President Trump is enduring the most turbulent presidency in recent history, creating a period of... Blah, blah, blah. Now, this is a very directional antenna. Watch this. See that? So that's very directional antenna. And that's just what you have to live with with a loop antenna. That's the one disadvantage of them. But it also has the advantage of being able to directionally tune out noise. That sounds real good. Gender recruits will have to overcome a lengthy and strict set of physical... Let's see if we can't find my favorite station, okay? Okay, guys. That's the look at this radio. Um, let, oh, you know what? I forgot to put it on FM. Let's do FM. Now watch this light. This light will go out and this light will come on. There we go. Now we're on FM. Now remember, this does not have automatic frequency control. It does not have uh, any, uh, signal lock of any sort. You know, this isn't your phase lock loop or even your modern FM radio. This is old world, old school FM. When this radio was made in 1947, consumer FM had been out for a little while. Armstrong started it before the war. But it really didn't take hold until after the change in frequencies after the war. Under the instructions of high government officials, keep denying him the transfer to such a medical facility. Sounds good, eh? 
God, there's so much crap on the radio though for music that it's hard for me to even listen and play and be serious while I'm playing it for you. There we go. I still like classic country better. Now, when you tune this, you can definitely almost see the response curve in your mind as you're tuning across the frequencies. And you have to find that sweet spot between, there's like two little ridges, two little places where the signal is strong, but it's not quite perfect. It's a little distorted. And you get to the center and it clears that distortion. It's really evident in this radio. And with water every morning, but... There we go. I mean, this thing will put out some, some sound, man. That 6L6 has got some punch to it. Hey, it's better music for a better holiday season with FM 100.3. We've got another fantastic Christmas concert coming up tomorrow. Noon is going to be Abe Kalen and Sherry Five. More music, more variety. Just a young gun. I thought they said music. So let me take you on a little guided little tour around the radio real quick and then we'll be done with it. The wood looks real nice. It's got a nice look to it. It's, it's uh, definitely not, you know, brand new or anything, but it certainly has a nice lacquered sheen to it. I didn't want to go too glossy. And I didn't want to try to remove all of the uh, the flaws in the thing because um, that's not what he asked for. He asked for it to look better, make it look as good as I could without going crazy. So there you go. Let's take a real close look at this dial, okay? I'm going to get in the way of the other camera, but that's okay. Check that out. It's kind of nice, isn't it? It's really kind of a nice radio. There's a look in the back. It's, uh, you, you're ever wondering what? Uh, in case you're wondering what an H161 looks like, there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. There's that big 6L6. You can see that puppy with that with the uh, two uh, heaters right there at the top shining away bright orange let's take a look at this with no lights on it so we can see that dial what do you think it's kind of a funky design that doesn't really lend itself well to those numbers shining through I'm not quite sure why that is but what the heck it seems to be working okay and it is a pretty radio I'm real real happy with it so there you have it folks 1947 Westinghouse model H161, ready to go. Customer will be here to pick it up in a day or two, I'm sure. And uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. And you'll see what that one is coming up soon. Right now, I'm spending a lot of time dealing with doctors and so forth and trying to help my wife out the best I can. So videos are a little slow coming out. I hope you'll be patient with me. I am putting them out because wifey sleeps a lot. And when she's sleeping is when I work on the videos. So... Um, don't worry, they'll be, they'll be coming, and uh, we'll, we'll soon see what's coming up next, okay? All right, so from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael, and that's all for now.